No, 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 no way. I'm not paying you. This is ridiculous. Every hole, it's the same crap. Hey, don't. I wouldn't. So, clearly not someone you want to play uh, golf with. He's a big cheat, but that's all right. So, al algebra review, I figure you need to see these done because I've, I'm kind of sick of you guys missing them. Negative 3 times negative 6 is 18. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24m. Greater than or equal to 4m plus 18. All right, I'm going to get common things on the same side. I'm going to add 24m over here. And at the same time, because I'm fancy, I'm going to subtract 18. All right, so we have this line down here. Nothing's changing here. 4 and 24 is 28m. And that's gone. That's gone. Negative 18 minus 18, 0. Divide both sides by 28. And come on now, that's going to be an easy one. M is less than or equal to 0. Over here, distribute a negative. Negative M minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 7 minus M. Add my M's. Get those together. And we get negative 6 is less than or equal to negative 7. Is negative 6 less than negative 7? No. Is it equal to negative 7? No. So this is no solution. All right. All right, find the equation of the line. So that's y equals mx plus b. m is our slope. We need two points. Look, there's one. Look, there's one. So up one, two, three, four. One is my, or negative one, I go to the left. So my slope is four over negative one, which is negative four x. My intercept is right here, negative five. So negative four x minus Five. All right, come down here. Factor completely. The first thing you need to do is look to see if there's any greatest common factors. If you're not sure, you know, you can start one. Start with the smallest number. Get some factors going. All right. See what goes into it. Does 24 go into 90? No. Does 12? No. Does 8? No. Does 6? Yes. Yeah. So I take a 6 out. So 4x squared because 24 divided by 6 is 4. 90 divided by 6 is 15, and 54 divided by 6 is 9. Now I'm going to factor that. First times last is 36, and I need it to add to 15. Well, that's 12 times 3, and since there's a leading coefficient, I need to do the box, unless you know another method. Some of you do, which is awesome. So I got 4x squared, 9, and now I got 12x and... 3x. Greatest common factor going this way is 3. Greatest common factor going this way is 4x. Greatest common factor going this way is 3. Greatest common factor going this way is x. So don't forget our greatest common factor at the beginning. x plus 3 times 4x plus 3. All right. Over here, I'm going to factor out a 3. That's x squared minus 16. This is the difference of squares. I know this one because it's a minus and there's a missing. I know it's automatically going to be the square root of these numbers. All right? So it's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 4. If you didn't know that, you could have done the x. Negative 16, and there's no middle term, so it adds up to 0. Over here, start at 4. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Looks a little bit like that. <clears throat> I'm going to start at negative 2, up 1 over 1. And it's pretty obvious that it's going to meet right here. And that point is 4, 2. And that is necessary to write. That's the solution. All right, so that's a little algebra review. Uh, so we, before we get into this, let's see um, how Darth is at uh, you know, fantasy football. Round 2, TK421. Fantasy owners with three receivers averaging at least a thousand yards are more likely to emerge victorious. I'll take a wide out. Impressive. I shall now select a kicker. <laughs> a kicker. <laughs> I find your lack of faith in my selection disturbing. My mistake. Pick. 
see you in the playoffs. Can't wait. All right, so uh, not very good at fantasy football either. No problem. All right, so prisms. I'm going to do some of these and <clears throat> talk about some common mistakes. First of all, these rectangular prisms are one of the most often missed, okay? You need to pick which side are you're going to be is going to be your base, your big B. Doesn't matter on this because any of them could be parallel to each other. On a triangular prism, for example, this has to be the base because it's the only two sides that are parallel to each other. Over here I can pick, and I often recommend to students, kind of shade it in. Shade the two bases in so you know, so you don't make a mistake. Because when I do surface area, and I do the perimeter times the height, plus two times big B, big B is always the area of the base, in this case it's length times width, I need to know what these are referencing. So what is the perimeter of my base? Well, it's 4 plus 5 is 9, so that's times 2, that's 18. The height of my, peer, of my prism is always the distance between the two bases. Cannot believe how often that was missed. Over here now, again, this is referencing my base. Length and the width of my base, 4 times 5. And I am not going to even bother doing that out. You can do that. All right? Volume. Volume, big B again, big B is area of the base, so that's length times width times the height, all right? Length times width of the base, four times five, times the height of the prism, the distance between the two bases is 11. And again, I'm not going to waste my time, you can multiply that out. All right, so over here, same things, everything's happening, surface area is the same thing, all right? plus um, 2b. Now the only difference is this is a little bit different formula. That's the area of a triangle, so one half base times height. Now I completely understand that this is an h and this is an h, and they are not the same thing. You don't understand that a lot of times and you need to. This is always big B, the base. This is the height of the prism. So what is the perimeter of our base? 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, times what's the height, what is the distance between the two bases, 4, plus 2 times 1 half, and again, yeah, those are going to cancel out, the base of our triangle, that's important, is where it's the right angle, so it's 6 times the height, 1.6. All right, and you can multiply that out. If I was doing volume, again, it'd be big B times H. It'd be one-half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle times the height of the prism, four. All right? Again, I'm getting tired of you guys missing that. Those are easy, too easy to miss. All right, perimeters and cones, very similar figures. Let's take a look. All right, so the surface area is one-half the perimeter of the base times the slant height plus the area of the base. This time we have the area is a regular hexagon. All right, so one-half the perimeter, eight times how many sides? We got six, so that's 48. Now we have the slant height. The slant height is this on this side. And sometimes you're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem here. So again, this would be C. So c squared equals 11 squared plus 6.9 squared. And then you would take the square root of that. So c would be whatever the square root of 11 squared plus 6.9 squared is. All right, and that would go right here. Plus 1 half. A is the apothem, the distance from the center of the hexagon to the side perpendicular. That's 6.9 times the perimeter again, 48. And hey, big boys and girls, you can multiply that one out if you'd like. The volume, one third, remember three of these pyramids fit in a prism, times the area of the base, which is one half AP, times the height. And the height here is the perpendicular distance from the vertex straight on down. All right, so that's one third times one half, I, it, it, you know what kills me? It bothers you that you guys have these fractions. You have a calculator that does fractions. As if you couldn't do this one enough, it's a piece of cake, uh, your calculator would do it for you. Hit the math frac button. 
times the perimeter, 48, and the height there is 11, and you can do that one out. All right, same thing here. We got all the same thing. You, you'd have to find the height for the volume here. So this would be C, so it would be, the height would be, um, let's see, H. So we would do 20.1 squared is gonna equal nine squared plus H squared. So you'd have to subtract and nine squared, so you get 20.1 squared minus, that would equal H squared. Take the square root of that. All right, so that's the really the only difference. You plug that in for H here, all right? Otherwise, it gives you the slant. Everything's the same. I, I don't need to do that. I don't think waste your time. All right, spheres we have. 4 pi r squared, uh, come on, I mean this is, this is a piece of cake. That should be a pi. 4 pi r squared is going to be your surface area, multiply that out. Your volume, oh no, a fraction. I'm going to freak out because I have a fraction? No, come on. These are, these are too easy to miss and people are missing them and, and it's really kind of bothering. Alright, let's take a next look. Look up here. Mr. Kelly, deleting my files. All right, so a square pyramid has a surface area. So I'm going to start. Surface area of a pyramid is one-half perimeter times slant height, right, <clears throat> plus the area of the base. The area of the base of a square is side squared. Now look at this. Perimeter of a square. I have four S's. So 72 equals one-half. Perimeter is 4S plus, or excuse me, times my slant height here is 3 plus side squared. All right, so 72 equals half of 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6s plus s squared. You need to get this on the same side so you can solve it. s squared plus 6s minus 72. Again, you need to factor that however you know how to. Set them equal 0 and solve them. If, can I have a negative number on this? Can I have a side that's a negative number? No, I cannot, all right? Down here, surface area of a sphere. I always start by writing out the formula. It's just too easy not to, and it cuts down on mistakes tenfold, I guarantee you. So then I go back and I put in what I know, all right? Then I go back and I divide what I know Okay, so let's see, what's that going to be? R, so that's 36, so R is going to be 6. All right, now, you got to be careful here because it's not asking for R, it's saying what is the sphere's volume? So then you take that and actually plug it into 4 thirds pi R cubed. Okay, then you spit that out and you get the volume. Let's talk about applications. We've got two types of applications mainly in this section. we got composite figures. So in other words, I would, you have to take the surface area and volume of this. All right, you're going to add two things, but you have to be careful. If I do surface area, if I do surface area of this, I'm really going to take, I'm not going to take, there's like this, you know, this square here lies between the two, right? It lies between the two. I don't ever need the area of that. So when I do the pyramid, I'm really going to do, you know, just the lateral area of the pyramid, aren't I? And then I'm going to add to that, now I don't, I normally have two B's, so I'm really going to add the, um, the lateral area of the prism plus just one big B that time, all right? Now volume, does anything change with volume? No, volume, I'm just going to add the volume of the pyramid plus the volume of the prism, okay? The second type of problem we have down here um, it is a problem I describe as how many times would it go into it? All right. So in this one, I have a Lego house, and it talks about the Lego house. And we want to know how many Legos. Then it has one Lego. All right. And the Lego is just one little piece of this. So I need the area of this Lego. And it's going to tell me, uh, all right. And then I need the surface area of this house. And I'm going to figure out how many Legos I actually need. And how I do that, I do, you know, the house divided by each Lego. And these are the areas respected. And then it'll give me an answer. 
Now, here's a trick. Say my answer is uh, 100.1. How many Legos do I need? Well, a lot of you round and say, I need 100 Legos. That's not right. If, if I need to get this 100.1, 100 won't cover this extra. This is not a rounding situation where I round down. I would actually need 101 Legos, okay? All right, so there you have it. And our homage to uh, Darth Vader wouldn't be appropriate unless we have him playing a little, uh, a little soccer. All right, good luck on Unit 10. Finish out the year strong. Sully out. Tu es complètement fou, mais qu'est-ce que tu fais